A game's trailer should show the player if it's their thing, their unique blend of genres. But the only way to know if it captures that unique blend is to play the game deeply. So after I play through a game, I roll back through the trailer. I walk through the individual bits of how they capture the game's unique genre elements. In the end, you might find out if a game is your genre. Welcome to Is It My Genre? Wow, Manifold Garden might be the most incredibly well-designed game that I've ever played. Before we get into it, I do have to say that this trailer that we're going to be looking at is the release date trailer uh, that my buddy Derek Liu made. He also makes indie game trailers. And uh, I'm kind of in awe of a lot of the decisions that he made going into this trailer, especially after playing through the game. It's kind of a, an incredible mashup of this very, very intelligent game with a game trailer editor who's at the top of his game. Uh, so we're going to take a look at it. Hopefully there will be some takeaways. And before I say anything else, let's just jump into it. I love this shot so much. Mm. This infinite hallway, we're going to come back to it. This shot, introducing gravity. And this shot, introducing non-Euclidean doorways. And non-Euclidean spaces. And the garden. And the game's core genre defined right here. Can't see it yet, we'll get to it. Beauty shot. Amazing world generation. These these edits are so elegant. Especially that one, this one. This one, another defining genre shot. I'll get to. I love that moment. Now wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it. This moment right here. It's not going to make perfect sense to you, but these kinds of beauty moments in the game are this delightful reward for making sense of what you're coming into. Now, I'd love to talk about a lot of things that happen in this trailer, and we're going to do that. I'm going to roll back through and we're going to look at them. Um, also, I, I do want to give a quick shout out for this kind of analysis video. Derek Liu does his own, um, and I'm going to include that link in the show notes. He does a, an incredible stream uh, on Fridays on Twitch. Um, also, our friend uh, Martin Marlon Weeb also does uh, trailer analysis videos that you, I'll also link in the show notes just because you can't have enough enough trailer analysis, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So the one thing that is really fascinating that Derek did not include in this trailer is the game's core, <laughs> core mechanic. Anytime that you come to a wall, you press R2 and the wall shifts so that where you, where was your wall is now your floor. Um, this kind of mechanic is very, very disorienting. It's so hard to get across in any kind of recorded media. So I feel like it's better for building through a grounded sense of orientation um, than clearly jumping into that. And of course, uh, Derek does tease that a lot through the trailer, which we're going to watch and go through now. Um, and before I do, one last thought, and that's a part of the game genre that I usually forget about to talk about, and that's that this game uh, that you can't entirely tell from the trailer is that it's a little bit of existential horror. Um, that you're kind of like, where am I? How am I? What is even going on here? It's very disorienting and intimidating. That is uh, hard to process and think about. Um, but that's why the game's design is so genius, and that's best illustrated in this very, very, very first shot. So we're going to roll all the way back to the beginning of the trailer, 
And look at when Derek picks up the box, he falls through the staircase looking upwards, and then as soon as his head comes back down to the slot, it activates the switch, opens the door, and you walk through the doorway. Now this is so elegant for a number of reasons, but most notably is the core design of the game that this is an infinitely repeating set of spaces. So, for example, in this very, very first shot, you see this problem. You see across this chasm, and there's no jump, there's no teleport, there's only falling. The only way for you to get through the world is to fall. But that spot over there is actually where he lands at the end of the shot, because there's an invisible screen wrap that happens right around here, and now he is actually on the the ledge that he was looking at at the beginning of the shot. This is impossible to get across conceptually because it's a mind-blowing concept, but this defines the game genre so elegantly, so perfectly, that it defines everything. It says it's a first-person game, it's a puzzle game, it's got infinitely repeating spaces, and your role in that world matters. This is probably the best establishing shot that I will see in a game trailer this year. The only downside to it is that it's hard for that concept to sink in. So it takes time. Not a big deal. So as soon as he hits that well, it opens the door and opens to this infinite hallway. Now this is the part of the game that I want to elaborate on because you can't pick this up on unless you play the game. And that's that even though there's infinite repeating horrors of overwhelming possibilities, but ultimately there's one possibility. In the very center of the screen, there is a doorway. And you see that doorway repeated across the sides a little bit, but that is the one and single way out of this room. And that's the incredibly potent design of the game, that there is always one path forward. There's not infinite possibilities. There's just one. And that's how you make it through the game. Now, this shot here is where Derek first introduces the beautiful, infinitely repeating objects. You see in the, in the background some, some shadows of this exact object that you're looking at here. And that's how the game works, is that there's kind of this open, infinite space, but there's, again, one real object that you're looking at, one core path forward. And here's where he introduces the gravity, and, and uh, hitting a switch, opening a door, and then an elegant, elegant transition. But then Derek introduces his own voice by creating uh, an associative language from one scene to another that doesn't exist in the game, um, unlike a uh, similar non-Euclidean game like, like Antichamber, uh, when you turn, the room does not change. The room is always exactly as it, as it appears from your immediate perspective, except for the puzzle solutions are still associative. So in the editing, he's saying it's a cause and effect scenario. That might not make perfect sense, but watch when he goes forward into this doorway and then turns left. He turns left and now he's in a completely unrelated room. This room is uh, not related in game, uh, but it helps to introduce the concept of these non-Euclidean doorways that, that are very transparent from when you're going to be going from one scene to the next. Watch this gateway. Uh, he walks around through the gateway and goes off the ledge into a repeating staircase. Um, this is masterful trailer design um, also uh, showcases the way that the, you can move through the game. Now this shot transitions to a, a another gravity falling moment where you're you're grabbing a, a seed. They're called seeds. Uh, actually the game doesn't have a, an overt name for them but the cubes are essentially seeds. You put that seed into a watered uh, soil spot and it brings forth a tree, establishing the concept of the gardening in the title. You're not really gardening gardening, um, but it's all a metaphor and uh, a voxel um, puzzle. So once he plants the seed, uh, the tree of course grows another seed. You can pick up that seed and then put it into a well, which opens up the doorway. Again, cause and effect. And the reason why when I first showed this introducing shot, uh, I said that this is a genre defining shot. And the reason why is because when you put the 
the cause, the seed, into the well. It causes the green to light up and creates that beacon that links to another object and that causes an after effect. This is the most powerful way that you can establish a puzzle genre in a trailer is by showing the cause and the effect of all those choices coming together. Now, after that, we have another shot. This doesn't really establish anything about the, the core puzzle, but it reinforces the elements of gravity and the infinite hallway setting. Um, very, very smart shot. Now, this is where, well, I'm not gonna explain too much, but I will say that you put forth a new creation. And that's what you're seeing here, is the, the generation of a new world. Um, it's very important to the narrative and very helpful to inform the structure of the game as what am I working towards? What is my goal here? And that's what that shot's about. It's about working towards uh, a framing goal. And so you are moving forward. It's not a, this, this actually establishes the genre of um, the structure of the game as opposed to say a match three game where you're going to jump to a different level and pick that level from a, uh, a level selection. Um, this says, no, you are end capping a chain of linking associations and something beautiful happens at more or less the chapter points. Uh, again, here's a different shot where Derek is falling and through association, it links to a different, a different shot. He goes into the black fog and looks up and now he's establishing a different mechanic in the game. Now you're not gonna remember this mechanic uh, as, as you first finish the trailer but it's a very important concept that comes in about the second act of the game. Suddenly the seeds have a new layer of depth to them where they're redirecting a uh, waterfall and he's activating a hydro plant with the, the water. This is not going to sink in, but it implies variety of mechanics and variety of depth. Um, so uh, I think that's actually probably a good segue to imply that uh, the game's structure is more than uh, a short portal like the original portal being three hour game uh, where pretty much all the mechanics come across in that time frame uh, manifold garden is much more uh, in my experience it was longer it was about eight hours um, and there's just a lot it, it took me a good amount of time to make through um, almost always i knew where to go and what to do which is amazing in this infinite space um, but towards the end, the game really, really pressed my, uh, my mental faculties and uh, I did not do as well and I needed a little bit of help. So I looked up some things and so I apologize. It's my deep shame. Um, <laughs> so we're just going to keep going, look over shame and go to this lock-in shot. So this is where they introduce the Tetris pieces. Again, another mechanic later in the game. Um, and again, the idea is let's tease the idea of these pieces moving through gravity and then let's show the cause and effect of once you use gravity to call have them fall into place it further elongates the green and again this is this this genre defining moment where it's about association locking things together and interconnectedness the interconnectedness is such a beautiful and compelling part of the design and it shows this this genius concept working in harmony with these uh, the the creative team behind uh, Williams game and of course Derek's editing here we have one more uh, fallen hallway shot that's reinforcing the setting and now this is where the, the trailer is at its climax in a trailer you want to have a, a three uh, more or less a three act structure where you frame the game you rise the actions of the game and then you climax um, to, to bring narrative amplification and closure to the whole thing. And that's what's happening now is the amplification and closure. I'm gonna stop here because this shot in the climax is beautiful. It shows the bubbling possibilities of the dark world that uh, we don't go into in the trailer, um, which is good because it's it's pretty special and you don't wanna spoil it, but you do wanna tease the, the, the sheer raw potential of, of the dark seeds. And there's one of those seeds being placed in a beauty, beautiful tree and the words being formed. Now notice how the letters are actually revealing 
themselves. That was a very intentional and smart choice. I think that maybe William was using that before Derek came into the picture, but if not, it's it's still reinforcing the idea of uh, bringing a full connection across the whole thing. Oh, uh, and the background of this shot is perfect because it's uh, centering, it brings your attention to the title, and uh, also reinforces the concept of the game, which is the infinite repeating hallways and what you're looking at um, ongoing through the design of the game. Very, very smart. And then we have this beautiful um, cataclysmic beauty shot of the color completion, uh, chapter completion. These moments are essential to understanding the game at large, um, but aren't as important in the trailer. You're not going to understand this moment, but it's helpful to see that there is a very beautiful eye candy reward at the end of each chapter. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I, I want to say so many other things about this game. Um, it's, it's incredible design. Um, Derek's phenomenal work on the trailer. Um, but I'm going to close it there. Uh, I'm going to include a link to Derek's work in the comments uh, uh, down there, the, the comment section, uh, or sorry, the description, that's the word. Um, and uh, yeah, so that this has been uh, a trailer analysis by me. I didn't work on this. I have nothing to do with it, um, but I have nothing but the utmost respect for the team members that did. It's one of my favorite trailers that I've seen this year. And I hope you've enjoyed my video and come by the next time that we do. Is it my genre? Hopefully this has helped you to understand whether or not Manifold Garden is your genre. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. I'm Josh. Bye bye.